We are live. Yay, thank you so much for joining us. I am joined by Obi award-winning theater <laughs> producer and native Detroiter and a good friend, Garlia uh, Cornelia. So Garlia, um, now you and I met, oh my God, years ago at the cell, I think. Yes. I was working, and a mutual friend, uh, Sarah Bellin, who was directing a show that I was working on. Were you working on that show with us or did I just meet you through Sarah? I, so I worked at the cell at the time. I was their oh. director of job development and mar marketing and I took fo photos. Basically it was like me jumping into, it, it was a, like, I think I've been do, doing the same type of work at different levels. And so the cell was like the like out of college or out of grad, grad school place. So yeah, I was I was there. I mean, you, you yeah. were like somebody who was in our se se season. So my responsibility to you was the same as it was to all of the the artists in the, in the space. So yeah, you were. And I rem I rem remember because I I'm trying to remember the the name of, of your of your show that you worked on, but I, I can't. I don't even it. remember. Oh, it. Okay, okay, good. Okay, good. So at least I don't feel well, so bad. It was just a reading. We a didn't reading. have a okay. full production. Got yeah, it, it was it went really fast. If Sarah is watching, she should put it in the comments. I told her we were interviewed, <laughs> but she's also a um, yeah, But yeah, anyways, yeah. well, and I feel like you're everywhere. You since then, which that was at least ten years ago, I think. I feel like that you kind was, of popped. That was a, a, like a little over ten, 10 years because I just celebrated my ten years um, from the new, new school. So it's been ten years since I got my MFA, okay. and we had a nice. Zoom. We we had a Zoom re, a union about two two weeks back. So shout out to, to the new 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 school for drama. But we have yeah. So it's been ten years. I was at the cell from like two thousand. I started there two thousand eight. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was a great it was a great space. Cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you on your uh, on your anniversary. Yeah. So um, let's start with, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words, uh, like a little uh, elevator pitch, if you will. I, Intro. okay, so I'm a creator. I create space mm -hmm. for particularly black art artists. Um, I have been creating space for black playwrights and uh, create, creating spaces that tell black stories since I was a freshman in college. And so that mm -hmm. has been, it's about nearly 20 years. And so I have a history of creating my own spaces. Um, I created one in um, college called Black Curtain at Indiana University. And that was kind of my deep the, the dive into Again, the same thing I've been doing, kind of producing, creating, writing, dry, 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 directing with the exclusive purpose that Black people get to tell their own stories and not just stories awesome. of us being, being oppressed, but stories um, of us being happy and love, like telling our stories. You said elevator, ele <laughs> an elevator pitch. And I am always long-winded, so that was not an elevator pitch. But I create spaces for Black artists to tell so so stories. I also create, and then under that is I create spaces for underrepresented people and artists. So I have a speech impediment. So and I'm also a woman. I'm also a mom. So those are things that matter. So whether you're Black or white, if you, like those are just things I advocate for in different spaces and with different organizations. So I've always had an activist um, part to, to me. I used to wear an HIV AIDS pin when I was 12 at school wow. because I thought it was important. So, yeah. Nice. Well, it's hard to... 
but that's okay. You do so much. I was actually really eager to hear <laughs> the elevator, how you were going to do that. So I thought you did really well, actually. And we're going to cover everything that you do as much as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah. But let's start with kind of your background because, um, you know, I, I saw, I read your bio or your about on your website, which I have to say was really well written. And for all the artists out there that I've worked with about writing their abouts on their website, please look at Garlia's website, which I will put um, in the comments, because your about is really well written. And your, your kind of your vision is very clear. And actually your vision came out in your elevator pitch as well. You're very focused on what you're doing with all of your projects and in your work. There's definitely a thorough line there. So anyway, so you grew up up in Detroit and now your father um, was, you know, international and you, so you've kind of had this staple in the theater and in the yeah. arts um, yeah. since, since very early on. So tell, tell me a little bit about that in your family and that. Um, and growing up in Detroit. Well, did, I mean, uh, Detroit um, was a great place to grow up. I, you know, I, I loved being from there, but it, I think, when you're f f from a place, that's that's what you know. So I have a lot of pride f f for Detroit, and I think anyone who's f f f from from Detroit, we just have we we just have a lot of pride for our sit 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 for our sit city. Um, I. You know my, I have a I have a really cool fam, 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 family, so it's very hard to like distill them that down to a okay. few words. They are a very dynamic yeah. and unique bunch of people, as is everybody's. But they all have some very interesting characters, and it's, and it's all all great. So my dad is now ninety foot. <laughs> Five. He turned uh, wow. ninety-five at the top, top, top of May, and from the time I was born, he was both teaching in schools full time. He retired from the Detroit public schools right before I was born, or when I was a baby, and and then he started teaching in the Peru. A ro a ro rochial schools. He's taught at the university le le level, English, Shakespeare, uh, religion, theater. I mean, a f a focus on sh Shakespeare. Obviously, it's from theater and English, but um, a, a, a lit ba uh, background, a psychology background, also an opera singer, also an actor. So my dad, so if you're wondering oh. why I feel like I should do all of, of the things, mm -hmm. that's what I saw, you know? So you kind of yeah. copy what you see. I don't, I I wonder what, what my kids are gonna do. Yeah. But, um, so yeah. he did all of all of the things. And so I, on, t on top of, like I was saying, having a full-time job teaching at, you know, the various Catholic schools when I was small, and then in other different um, positions. Um, he also had a choir, choir a, a mad 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 choir that was in on um, that was in on um, Terrio. So we would go every su su Sunday to Sar Sar Sarnia or to uh, to, to a Cobra. Rana in Sarnia, Sar 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 and then he would have his his re re rehearsal. So that happened every Sunday. He he would um, we would we would have rehearsals for his player. He would also direct Handel's Messiah a few times. That was just something I remember being taught part of. I also have three older half. Siblings, I don't actually call. I don't ever think of them as my half siblings. Just when people see their ages, they're like, "Wait, that's not possible!" Because mm -hmm. like it's, it's, it's technically they're they're half, but they're you know we have great relationships. I mean, so they're my they're my siblings. So that's you know that's it. Yeah. So, um, but 
it was really cool having like three older siblings in the house when I was a small kid, you know, with, with my parents. So it was a full, just, well, not three, because now my older brother was mayor, mayor, mayor married, but just three older siblings who were in and, in and out of the house and just like part of the family. And then a host of very close family friends, um, something that everyone in my family really does well as we attract really cool people and kind of they turn into our mm -hmm. fa family and so this is nice. something that i i just take no note of when i when i think yeah. about the people i have in my life who are like my best friends who are more like my sisters and just like my partners in my life i think about how did that happen like why did i think that was a thing to do oh because my parents like that's just they just Word. have to they you know um, that was just part of that. So both of my parents, my mom and my dad, are from the De De Detroit, and so cool. we're just it's you know there's a there's a big history in De in De in De in De in, De in Detroit. And my dad also used to take um, uh, kids from the sus 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 suburbs over to 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 England and, and perform. Shakespeare. That's incredible. So he did that in the 60s. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's and there's more. We could do a whole podcast yeah. on my family, but that's a, a little bit about the cool, nice. the cool people I come from. Yeah. Detroit. Cool. Yeah. It's nice to have a supportive. Yeah, having a supporting a supportive upbringing makes a yeah. huge difference. So mm -hmm. um, awesome. And I saw that you studied at, and you mentioned it that you studied at Indiana University. Um, yes. Which you know, I went to Purdue, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I didn't know until after I got there that IU was the theater school. I probably yes. should have gone to IU because I also got my degree in theater. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so yes, it's, yes. That's okay. I started at a theater conservatory in California, so I was eager to get uh, my degree. Got it. Um, but yeah, IU had a, has a great program, and you studied um, African studies and dis. Just, how do you say it? Just yeah, yeah. So, so I did my my uh, B, 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 BA in in, in theater and drama and then in English, and then I did an I will work on an MA after that in African American African the diaspora diaspora stud studies and so that's just the study of black culture throughout the, the, the diaspora and part of my reasoning for uh, we're working on that my, my, my masters before my, my MFA was I just felt like I really wanted to have the tools to write stories and be immersed in um, t the t telling stories from the black experience and mm -hmm. for the black experience and so that was really my way just to set myself up like I you know I yes I am black but that doesn't mean I know you know know, know, mm -hmm. know everything about being black just so the white person mm -hmm. doesn't know everything about being white so um that that was just a first stepping stone for, for me to begin this journey um, in nice hold, holding space for black art artists. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, and then I all, I want to get to your projects and everything. Um, but since we're there, I think I think it's fascinating uh, your kind of approach to representing. Um, black voices and underrepresented voices. And so I'm curious now, of course, the hot topic in everybody's mind is the Black Lives Matter movement that is happening right now and gaining momentum, which is exciting and scary and overwhelming. And, and I'm really curious to kind of hear your take on everything, where you're at, what you see happening. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, uh, I have so Money. I just had to kind of jot down no notes. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think this is a really impo 
well, well, important time for the mo mo movement that would be yeah. the free freedom, like true freedom for black people. And, um, you know, the, 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 the in to humane and, and cruel death of, of George Floyd was just the, the tipping point of something that's been going on for four to 600 years. Right. Right. And so, and so I think what is this mo momentum now is not a momentum for black people or people of, of color. It's a momentum for the white community, 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 community who is starting to say, oh, okay, this, mm -hmm. this actually is an issue and and I, and I think we're seeing a number of things because we're in a society that says white is 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 right 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 and so because white is right and because white is at the the top when white people start to say this is an issue then it becomes momentum and it becomes, oh, this is a thing. It's been a thing my entire life. I've been extra conscious of my skin color since I was five. I knew that my mom was fair, my dad was dark, I was fair, and my friends were white. So, oh, I look more like them. I've been thinking about that forever. I've been thinking mm. about, and I I just reposted on my Instagram today. I've been re I've been thinking about the fear I have at having a black son since he was born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I think right now what is happening is my white friends are. I mean the, the George Floyd video was so clear. And they and they all have have been clear, but this was just like yeah. more. Yeah, and garden, so, yeah. right. Turn and off. so and so, it's 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 both that combined with everybody is trapped in their homes because right. let's not forget we're in the middle of a pandemic. We're not. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to be socially. A distant. So let's not forget that. Let's not forget that people who have been dying the the most because of COVID are black and brown people. So mm -hmm. let's not forget that black black people are dying. Mm. Period. Um, right. They've been dying either because of COVID or because of police violence if i just look at this short period of like Mar Mar march 13th until now black people have obviously been being killed because of the color of, of our skin forever mm -hmm. i mean since mm -hmm. since we were brought over here um, right and so i think this is a time where people are just are tired i'm 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 tired People are just ex so they're ex exposing everything, mm -hmm. and so that is what is go going on. Everything is being exposed as it should 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 be, and it's uncomfortable. Uh, it's not easy as a black person or a white person. It's not fun to have to feel like you are teaching white people about, about, right. about these, 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 these issues at the, at the same time, it is, it is very important that white people stand up because the people and talk to their friends who are white and their family who are white about these issues, because black people mm -hmm. don't need to, don't need to be told that we need to, 
justice and equality. We have always no, 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 no. And so this t time is an is an is an eye opening time. Um, and I think it it is bringing people to together, and people are learning. And I'm very open for the learning because we all want to get laws passed. We want to defund mm -hmm. the police. Like, like, you know, we want actions instead of statements. State, 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 state statements. And so I think that's what this time is, whether it's in the theater industry or whether it's in corporate America. America this is a everyone. And so I, I think I think something that's interesting when, that people are surprised that there would be issues of inequality in the theater the theater industry. I zoom out just just a, 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 a bit because people always view, view artists as just being like open and free and equal and everything. And that's and that doesn't like that's the uh, uh, that that is the stereotype that I think some people not in, in the industry think. Mm. And so, you know, I, I think for anyone who was, who was surprised to hear that just like any industry, the theater industry you've seen on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social that you are on, people are calling each other out, you know? And people, yes, people are yeah. calling each other out everywhere, and um, it, it's it's just the, the time. It, it is the time to ex ex expose for change. It is the time to expose for 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 action. Yeah, agree. I totally agree. And I think um, the discomfort that certainly white people feel right now in in all of this is something that obviously black people have been feeling for years and years and years and i just want to ask you real quick too is that i was in a conversation earlier where somebody was saying well don't ask a black person like how you as a white person is racist because um that's something that they've been dealing with and, and you kind of need to open yourself up and i kind of thought and i, I want to hear your perspective because we were you know she was also white um and i kind of thought in, it, it is important to engage in a dialogue um, and I, however, I do understand how frustrating it is to have been living with this awareness since you were five, you know, and then all of a sudden now have all these people who are awakening to this, like kind of bugging you about it. But, uh, where do you stand as far as like having conversations about it? I mean, obviously we're having conversation about it, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been having conversations about race forever. I just like mm -hmm. made right. sure that that was something that was part of my life. I also gotta credit my mom to, for being extremely outspoken <laughs> in regards to, to being a nice. black woman. And so, you know, uh, she never let me forget it. <laughs> even, yeah. even, even when I well, I wanted to, and so, right. by the, but by the time I got to college, uh, I was like, oh, right, yeah, you know, I was like, I was fully equipped, um, but I'm all for it. You know, I think something that's really, really cool is that, no, cool is the wrong word. I think something that I am KK with and that I like seeing opening up is that just being for me personally. So what I have noticed is that I am no longer as uh, as guarded around being very clear about saying the word black or white with white people. Mm -hmm. I've always mm -hmm. been fine with it, of course, with black people, but I I, I think 
it, it's just something I've noticed in, 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 in my recent conversations. And I think it's not even talking. It's, it's just about, I've been very clear about saying white people need to fix what's, 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 what's happening. So I think that, 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 that type of conversation is new for me. And I think it's new for, a, I, I can't speak I for, for everyone, but I think it is newer for all of us to feel like we are just point, pointing at white people and saying, look, these are, you know, these, these uh, cops are white who are, you know, killing black men, killing black women, killing black children and I, I, you know, this is wrong. And we all know that we've been, we've been trying to do everything that we I can for years, but you, we got to white people have to step up. Yeah. People, that's it. I yeah. Mean, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, so the theater, community what at least from what i saw and you know and i am zoomed out because i work with arts across discipline artists across discipline but the, i feel like the theater community was a little late um <laughs> to the ball game as far as as making statements or kind of acknowledging the black uh, lives matter phenomena not totally surprising because i feel like theater is always a little late in some of these things um but i, I you know but like even Lynn Manuel was like just now, you know, he acknowledged, oh, I probably should have said something sooner. Um, do you think how, like, like compared to the film industry, you know, where we know we have got Weinstein, slightly different issue, obviously, um, but like that's so clear now. And even in the music industry, we know there is like rampant abuse going on and exploitation. Um, where do you think the theater lies in all in all of this? As far as how bad is it in the theater world, from your point of view? Um, tough question, huh? It's not tough. I just, you know, I, I mean, you want to be political? You? <laughs> I always. Have. Um, I think that um, theater. I mean, I, th I think it kind of goes back to what. To what I was saying is that theater is like any industry, and so it, for people who are surprised, like, oh, I didn't think it would happen in the the theater. Well, why not? Like, yeah. just because yeah. we're in the arts doesn't mean everyone thinks everyone's equal. Just because we're in the arts doesn't mean that that systemic racism is. I'm gone just because we're in the arts doesn't mean that there is an a hierarchical structure. I mean, right. it's everywhere. And so, right. of course, it's in the theater. And I think, <clears throat> look, I, I was supposed to write an essay, maybe a couple all that months ago and I was really wanting to talk about the lack of black leader 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 leadership and mm -hmm. I really I wanted to talk about this because when I looked across all of these theaters just like just everywhere um, and when I heard the concerns for from artists, and you also have to rem remember, I sit like right in the mid middle. You know, I've had this whole career that's been focused on black artists, right? Right. So, You're one of those leaders in some right? ways. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and so, and I have two organizations I'm part of, part of. One I founded. A black board, and we were at the cell. So we started off at the cell. We were at the cell for about 10 years, and then we moved to being at the, the drama, drama, drama 
if we get a guild, we having space there. And now, now, like everyone else, we are on Zoom, you know. Right. But so, so there's a black, a blackboard, which is devoted to black playwrights, and then there's Harlem, there's Harlem Nine, and the, then um, there's also. Sorry, I just got twenty first century. Oh yeah, sure. I got distracted because my daughter's not. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, no, no, no. Um, so a black, a black, blackboard is devoted to black playwrights. Right. Right. Um, and then Harlem of Nine. I am one of the fa- founders. Like, there's a group of us, so we are the founding. Is it nine? Is there nine of you? We started off as nine. So we started off as okay. nine, but now there's six of us. Um, Okay. So we've been around for t- 10 years. Blackboard has been around for almost tw- tw- 12, you know, so that's the work I've been doing. Do- right. Doing. And so then I'm, but I'm also now, you know, I, I do work for a predominantly white institu- institution. Yes. <laughs> I work for yeah. Oh, can I feel that? <laughs> yeah. It, it's, you know, I mean, it's a fact. So, um, yeah. But, so I I think I just I I see, see things from you know two very distinct uh, play, play places and you know I I think you know we I'm in the space with where people want to change people want to change every everywhere and so people are actively seeking change in. In, in all faith faces, you know, both institutionally yeah. and, and artists are seeking change. Yeah. Because absolutely and our industry is not per, 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 per perfect. And and and, you, and I don't think you need me to t- tell you that. All you need to, to go on is Google and it's it's right yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I do want to applaud you for sustaining, like you said, Black Blackboard is 12 years old now, and that's the company that you founded. I've seen a lot of, you know, while I used to, um, I was managing producer of a theater festival. So I saw lots of kind of um, Black voices come through and even Black organizations, but very few have really lasted as long as you, few in general across the board, whether they're Black or not. So. Yeah, well, and I think that there's a core group. There was a really beautiful essay written by Marcus Scott hmm. that was in American theater maybe like three weeks ago. Oh, recent, okay. Three weeks ago. Um, and he and, and it really named uh, the black theater organizations that have been doing this work for a number of years. So there's not mm-hmm. only, well, there's- Well, at, there's NEC, at, right? Are they still around? Yes, but but the the ones that, that he was particularly speaking about were, were the, the Oh, 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 oh. The fire this time, the mo- mo- movement, the theater company, liberation theater company, the Na- Na- National Black Theater. Mm-hmm. They mentioned ha- 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 Harlem Nine and blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. A black, a black, a black board as the organizations that were devoted to you were on black the right. artists. Oh, that's what I see. Yes, um, nice. but so yeah, you know, I, you know, just to say, you know, and the guy said, nah, 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 nah national. Black, black, black theater. I think black, I 
So yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So these organizations have been doing the work outside of what you see. they've just been doing the, the work for you know, years. So I, I know I forgot, I forgot your your question, but I had a point That's to all good. of that. I think I was just saying yeah. that there was a great uh, uh, essay that really na- named some organizations that have been doing this work. So if people are interested in trying to find black theater organizations, that's a list. And then there's also, that's that's a list kind of here in New York. Oh, I was just saying, you know, like, so yes, Blackboard and Heartland might have been around, but I feel like there's a core group, a group of us. Oh, and also Keith J- 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 Joseph Adkins. Uh, mm. um, oh my gosh, Keith, I'm sorry. I just, my, my, my okay, brain, I will brain just link. blanked. Yes. We will put our, I'll, we'll put the link for the Marcus Scott article down there that has the great. list. Great, great. Um, uh, yeah, because yes. your point is that there are others. You're not the only one out there, which, right? But, which I think is- right, sorry. New black, 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 fat, 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 fat. It's called the new black. Best, so that's the other one. But all of oh, these best. are in. Okay. Yeah. The, the yeah. Other. We'll put all but, the links in. But, um, yeah. But just to say, there's there is a, a, a group, group, and so and, and we all view each other. Something that I think is really important is to note is that we all we we view each other as like brothers, sister organizations. So we support a lot support the, the work that each other does and you know the the artists in our community community have kind of been through each of our programs to develop their work at different times we've seen these artists grow from you know being new to being a award when 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 winning so i'm just really proud to be part of this kind of move this full move, movement of artists from like 2000 so, so seven eight who we we have not stopped we've been here we've been out wow. here doing this work forever and also when i think back to what i started in um college i i hoped to like meet people who did the same type of thing you know, and yeah. and now yeah. they're all around 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 me. You know, and so it, it just nice. it's it's really really special to just be part of these type of organizations focus on black black artists. Okay, great. And um, we're gonna wrap up here pretty soon, but. But I just want to kind of give a shout out to some other things that you've done. Um, when you were in college, you you uh, started the Black Curtain Theater. Mm-hmm. Was that a company it's or was that like, like a group? It was a theater company within the predominantly white theater department. Right, right. So I started it because same thing. I mean, that's how I started. I noticed that there were not enough opportunities for the Black actors and and the black students who were involved in, in theater and who were theater nice. majors so i started my own and the, and that work yeah. went mm-hmm. on to do work with the diversity education department so i did actually do a lot of training through theater on diversity education we would do oh, great. and i was i was rem- remembering this afternoon I was speaking to someone and I was and I just remembered that I attended a a white a white a white a white whiteness retreat retreat in like 2006 or or five Mm -hmm. because that was part of this diversity education training and so part of this was to like to teach white people about their whiteness Mm -hmm. and so it was like and, mm. and 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 how that affects them. And I was saying that is not old. Like that work is not new. You know that work has been right. going on for a long right, time. Right, right, right. So awesome. happy people are open up to it now. But you know, 
but don't forget. But let it be and let it, or you know let it be known that this has been going on for a long time. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, and then you also you had a nonprofit, twenty first century salon and incubator. Well, no, so right? that was the 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 the, 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 the cell. Oh, that was the cell. That was at yes. the cell. So the cell was at the time. I do not know. Sorry, Nancy here. I do not know if the if their t- tagline is still the same, but they were oh, at the I time it's okay. a twenty first century. 21st century. So okay, so on. Yep. So there, and it's still a very, from what I know, there's still like a very salon um type space, but really incubate Debating, something the cell does really well it's just kind of yeah debating artists and kind of taking people in and so that that fit with who i am as a human yeah with your vision yeah absolutely and then i did just want to say um oh that that harlem nine uh won an obi award for yes. 40 hours in harlem the festival yep. right yeah the festival won that, won so. an obi, yep an obi award a week before i gave birth to my son on outside on the side side sidewalk oh really wow yep. that's an eventful that an eventful week okay it was it was, it was. Nice. um and then lastly uh, I really wanted to talk about um, Patreon with you. Oh you yeah, <laughs> I'm so but, yeah. No, no, no. You're fine. This is great. Oh my gosh, I think all of this stuff really needs to be heard, and I'm I'm really gl- grateful that you were able to come on here and kind of say it, so that I can promote it out there. Because part of the reason why I wanted you on here is because I really truly believe that you have led this path of what I call hashtag another way which is that you identified your passion, your kind of authentic passion, and you have pursued it um, to every nth degree, not just the way that people tell you to pursue it. You've gone and done all of these, you know, right. You've, you've um, started all of these organizations on your own. You, you're always working on like five projects at once. And you, <laughs> you I think you kind of like, Matt, and you're always so calm too, by the way, you never seem stressed. So, you have two kids. Wow. That still blows my mind. I was saying wow. earlier that I felt for sure you were going to disappear after you had a baby, and you did not disappear. So, no, I did props. Not. I did. Um, but anyway, so so Patreon. So I think this is also something that I've worked. Uh, I I mentioned to a lot of artists that I work with, and I think really I think Patreon in so many ways is the new model uh, of the future. Mm-hmm. It's 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 the artist's version of DIY. Um, yeah. Yeah. career looking, you yeah. know, and yeah. so uh, I right. tell us a little bit about your Patreon because you've really, um, even with because I think a lot of people might say, but you've got so many projects going on and you work for the public, which is this like other thing. So, how have you been able to, to like launch and sustain um, your subscriber base on Patreon? Yeah, I think you know. I have just told them the truth every step of the way. So I, you know, I found out about Patreon through actually Kira. Yeah, so, the cell. Um, I'm, I, I, I question it because I'm like thinking of the, of the steps. So like she had told, I believe, either I found out about it and then she kind of shared something with me. Either way, Whatever the the point, she, I learned of um, Man, Man, Amanda Palmer through Kira, mm. and then I listened to her audio book. And it was at a time in my life where I was, you know, I, I write very openly about my my life. So if you want to know, just go online. But um, it was at a time where I was like really it was before the public it was before a lot of things and so just like i've always kept up with my gigs and stuff always right so i found out about pay patreon and because i kept up with all of my things and i listened to amanda palmer's book the art of of asking i was like oh this feels like me this feels like what i do which is everything 
you know, people always are co commenting on how I do all of these things. I'm always commenting how I do all these things, but I, you know, I have always have, a, have had a very particular reason why I do all the things I, I do and why I think things can be created. And so that's what I call a vision, by the way. Vision, a vision. Yes. yes. You have a very clear um, vision. And so Patreon helps me get all that out. Like I can sh share it with people who actually care. I mean, mm -hmm. and not that my friends care, of course, people I know care, but it's also cultivating what I love and what I kind of talk about is that I, the people in my space are my community. And so I'm very honest with them about things as, as they happen. I'm honest if I don't get stuff out. I'm honest if I haven't posted in a while. But I always come back with a lot of information. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I always come back with a lot. And I document every, everything. I'm a, I'm a photographer. Something else I learned from my uh, mom who followed us around with a big camera everywhere, right? So I, I, I do, do, document things. And that is a big, big deal to me. So hey, Patreon is just a way for me to document things and share it with people and they and and then it's like okay i want to create productions i want to create things outside of institutions i've 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 always you know i love 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 my job at the at the, at the public but right now i'm not barely at the public i'm barely a who has been working with black communities and who's been working in theater forever. Um, and so I, you know, I, I needed a, a, a way that, that all of that, but yeah, the a pay, pay, Patreon just gets all of that out. And it's, and it's a way for, for me to just share my journey from you know share my journey and also try and build it because i want to grow and continue to support black artists on a bigger right. scale and the only way i see that i can do that and move myself forward per personally and per better 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 professionally clearly through my vision is with something like a pay patreon you know it's it i make it up as i go and that's what i do pretty well i think i've done okay with that in my life so because i'm just like always creating and in the space of creating that's what patreon gets now Look, I don't, I don't have the number of followers that uh, man, Amanda Palmer does. I mean, she's pretty incredible. Um, but I hope that I can, you know, I, I mean, look, that is a goal to have my uh, Patreon be so huge that I can have a team. Because, yeah. Because I'm at a, I am at a point right now where. I do so many th things and I want to be involved in so, so many things that I am really starting to need a team that I have myself. <laughs> and so yeah. um, I, I want to continue to grow, you know, nice. as, mm -hmm. as myself and as my entity. I don't know. That's Wait, <laughs> I don't know. myself and, and just, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I, I think part of the, why you've, you've, what you've been able to do so well is you've been able to, all you need, let this be a takeaway to the artists is all you need is a strong vision. It's really like, that's where it starts with the vision. And then, you know, I'll also post your Patreon so people can check out your levels. And then also, you know, you, you read the ask, uh, or, uh, the Amanda Palmer book, you know, not being afraid to ask. So that's also an important part of it, um, being it because there are people out there who want to support you and believe in you because they believe in the vision. 
Right. So I think that's really right. important. That is yeah. right. Um, and, and I think being able to say that, like I, I, after we spoke the other week, I started to type out my, my, uh, why. Yeah. Oh, and good. So, yeah. And so I've been, I'm, I have it done. So I'm going to be recording a, a video that I post sometime about my war. Why, why? So that was very helpful. Oh, great. Oh, good. Well, let me know that too, because this video will be on YouTube. Um, so this will be on my YouTube at TSGO prods. I will make sure to post that link in it once it's up. Um, I will also post a ton of links that we talked about today. I'll make sure those are all in it. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I, I, do you have, tell us, well, well, first off to give us your social media handles and, yes. um, and tell us about any projects you've got going on right now, anything you want to plug or promote, um, and then we'll sign off. I would say all of my social media handles are the same, consistent. Nice. Great. Branding is my thing. Uh, Garlia Cornelia. Yeah. Garlia. So Garlia Cornelia at Gar Garlia Cornelia on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you type that, that's my public uh, page. So they're, they are, they are all the, the same everywhere. Um, and right if now I have a few things happening. I don't think I can really like expose them. There's there's something I've just like in in my head that I've just started working on that I've been talking to some people about. So that and then you know I I think just to know that everyone is focusing on the digital stuff. I think something I learned how to do quickly during this time of, of, of social distancing that I learned how to live stream on OBS. So I also am the, am the ch chief rep of New York City for uh, PAL, the Parent Artist Advocacy League. And so that just goes back to my like very big interest and in, in desire and support parents. So when you said, you know, you thought I would go a, 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 like after I had kids, I wouldn't be here. But the work I, I do and work with Rachel Spencer Hewitt, who founded uh, PAL, is solely based on making sure parents are still involved in the theater, theater, theater space. So I've been just really involved in that work and, you know, the the pub, public has created some great space for parents as well. So it's been really great to be involved in that through PAL and then also a little institutionally. So um, so anyway, I, I produced and video edited and then live streamed a play by Jenny Lamb called Mother Low Load, which was a a benefit for PAL's Emergency Child Care Fund um, grant, and that was over Mother's Day week, a week, a weekend. So that's something in the yeah. past, but, like, it's a skill. I've, like, taken my ph ph photography, you know, I mean, I always do something with visual or the digital. So instead of doing um, photography right now, I'm focusing on, like, video editing or a lot of live streaming if I um, can. So that's just something I, you know, I enjoy and it's nice to get back in the, in the editing space and just like yeah. hone those skill skills again. Um, because again, it's just like taking me to the next level because then I use it for black before. So we've been doing a lot of Zoom readings and Zoom community met my nights because black artists still have stories to tell right. so we're still able to do it and we've actually been really successful i've been really happy about the turnout for zoom um mm -hmm. stuff so that's been great we've retained people it's, it's it's just been great and people have had really great conversations about these these plays over zoom so that is the point to be able to just yeah. support Keep artists at yeah, support artists at any level, level, and um, and they get to t t tell their stories and ha and 
I have an audience and it's, it's really awesome. So that is, I, that's some, I mean, there's a lot of things, so but that's what I'll I know. Cause they're always on, doing so that's what I will end on to share that in particular, that's something I, I learned during this, this time. But again, like yeah. I didn't release a statement for blackboard because we've been here, mm. you know, like, uh, like I, I don't need to release a statement. I right. The so the work I've done is is the speaks the, for itself. The, the statement, you know. So yeah. Um, and I think we, and I just can to continue to find ways through those channels to make space and to and to educate people and to so support like advocacy is 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 huge. Um, there's you know, there's more examples, examples, but I'll just tell those stories on my Insta, on my Instagram. And, so go check yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much again. I also just have to say that you were the quick one of the one of the quickest uh, that I saw in the theater community. Certainly jumping on OBS, especially. I mean, I know people who are still a lot of theater people are still trying to wrap their brains around it. And if I thought you had time. If you're interested, let me know because everyone is looking for an OBS consultant. By the way, oh, well, um, I'm, not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not an expert. I just, I just like, I learn, learn, learned it. But I, you know, I'm right. There, are, there are experts out there. I'm, I'm still learn, learn, learning. But it's a thank you. It's, I mean, it's just, it's a yeah. skill. It's a new skill, you know. Right, and you're doing it. So you know, you yeah, just didn't let it exactly, stop you. You exactly. didn't let the pandemic stop you. So. Yeah, right. The theater community is lucky to have you. Thank you. We need more people like you. Um, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank and you. Yeah. Thank you.